Curiosity plays into human psychology. It's a phenomenal motivational force to take an action, which means it's a great strategy to employ when coming up with your email subject line. Oh, another alert. And this one comes from Devin Reed, the head of content strategy at Gong, who also shares some great insights on LinkedIn and just started a great newsletter that you can sign up for called the Content Strategy Reader. That's R-E-E-D-E-R, like his last name. Let's see what Devin has to say about curiosity. Writing effective email subject lines is a superpower. Here's a quick tip for increasing your open rates. Drive curiosity. He calls it the mystery subject line. Now, the goal is to create curiosity that motivates your reader to open your email by clicking. They hope to solve the curiosity within the body of the email. You're specifically being vague to intrigue the reader. Here's some examples. This can't be right. Reader, what can't be right? I might be wrong. Wrong about what? Does this work for you? Does what work for me? Notice the question mark. It's designed to incite curiosity. But warning, you must deliver on the curiosity you create in the subject line in the body of the email. Otherwise, it feels like a manipulative gimmick to steal attention, a.k.a. clickbait. Try it today. Inject some mystery into your subject lines, and you'll increase your open rates overnight. Right. Well, Devin's right. Asking a question is one of the best ways to create curiosity, but what are some others? Professor George Lowenstein wrote this paper back in 1994, and in it, he outlines the five main ways that you can create curiosity. They are ask a question, start a story, but don't finish it. Make a statement that's unexpected, imply you have information that they don't, or imply that they have information that they have since forgotten. Now, this last one is infuriating until you figure it out. Seriously, think about all the times that you're watching a show or a movie and you see someone in it that you recognize, but you can't quite remember where you've seen them before. I'm convinced that that feeling is responsible for 95% of the direct web traffic to IMDb. Anyway, Scott and I talked about curiosity as well. Take a listen your opinion on the overall value or quality of a subject line. What in your opinion makes a subject line good? Um, does it get attention? Does it arouse curiosity? Mm. That's, that's all I care about. Um, and if it does that, well, and then obviously that, that translates to, uh, to open rate. Um, there are, uh, there are certain things that I will, uh, look for and look against, uh, look, 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 be upset about, for example, if I see uh, an email line uh, that is shouting, has a lot of all caps, uh, an email line that has a lot of exclamation points, um, those, are, those are red flags to me. And, uh, and I'll say that's not a good one. If, uh, if I see too much jargon, depending on the uh, target customer, that's uh, that it, it falls into the, uh, this has to be, uh, this has to be tweaked. Um, what happens a lot with the ones I write, um, if it's too clever, mm. I sometimes say, wow, that's, that's really clever. But I think uh, concise and clear will do the job a little bit more than clever. And guys like me tend to want to get uh, fancy and have fun where sometimes um, the, the question is uh, do you feel you're too paying too much uh, money for auto service? Um, is probably clear, precise, and talks to a pain point that uh, that somebody might have. Mm. So, so you mentioned curiosity a few times here, um, and and we will cover the the five curiosity levers as we like to call them. Um, so you know, start a story but don't finish it say something unexpected, imply that you have info that they don't, imply that they used to have info that they have since forgotten. Um, and that leads me to the fifth one, which is apparently something that I have forgotten. Um, are, are there particular curiosity levers, for lack of a better term, not my term, but um, that you kind of like to pull? Are there anything, it, it, as it pertains to curiosity, kind of how do you approach that? How do you approach, you know, piquing someone's interest? Um, well, first thing is, is looking at the, uh, at the client. Or, or the customer or the person who'll be uh, that this email is targeted to. And uh, once we've focused on that, um, the decision comes to, are we going to try and tweak a pain point? Are we going to try and tell a story? How are we going to approach this customer? And then the curiosity um, uh, will, arrive, will arise from that. 
Mm. So what what are what are we going to uh, what are we going to tell this person? What do we want them to have happen? And then based on that, how are we going to get them into it? How are we going to open it? One of the ways, if it's a story, uh, I like one of the ones that you said, the open loop, which is the uh, you know start start a story, but they have to finish it by uh, by opening the email. Again, one of those places where uh, y- you better close that loop right away, or you'll have people bouncing out of the uh, out of that email fast. Hi, thank you for watching. If you are enjoying Growth Decoded, you can find a link in the description to sign up and join the Grow Team. You'll get exclusive content and opportunities that have to do with the show. You can also hit the subscribe button for Active Campaign's YouTube channel somewhere down here, and you will never miss an update from us.